All right. Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to our March edition of the Salesforce Marketers Ask Me Anything um, APAC session. Um, so this just session is jointly hosted with uh, the marketing group from Cyberjay as well as for Ajmer India. And uh, as always, like, you know, we, we have a great panel, uh, some of our marketing champions and experts in the community. So myself, along with Anurag, Isha, Sharath, Soumya. And then today we have two guest speakers as well, Bupendra and Pankaj. So I'll let them introduce themselves later when their sessions come up as well. Okay. Um, Anurag, Isha, Sharath, Soumya, do you guys want to go ahead? Quickly have a quick intro to folks, those who are new. Yep, uh, let me start first. So hey everyone, uh, welcome to this AMA session for the March edition. Uh, this said Anurag, I'm having uh, close to nine years of experience in Salesforce uh, as a pharmacy in the part of. I'm a Salesforce marketing champion. I'm currently working in horizontal as a marketing automation lead and uh, really excited to, you know, help you all. Hello everybody, my name is Isha Gard, 11X certified and a Salesforce marketing champion. Last year I was awarded with the Golden Hoodie um, winner and I work at USD as a Salesforce developer and excited to share my expertise on Pardot. If you want to go through, you know, Pardot learners can uh, start with pardotpubgirls.com. That's a website started by me and two of my uh, lovely friends. So happy trailblazing. Yep. Hello everyone. Well, my name is Soumya and uh, I'm a Salesforce marketing champion as well. And I'm a certified Pardot specialist and also I work on SFMC. Currently I'm working as a marketing automation specialist at uh, Mandus Technologies. And today I'm here to uh, like help you and assist you all with your queries on Pardot SFMC wherever I can. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining. Hey, good evening, everyone. Yeah, my name is Sharad Ketamunna. I have around six plus years of experience in the Salesforce ecosystem, uh, where I have worked on uh, different Salesforce platforms uh, like Sales and Service Cloud, Pardot, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, uh, Data Roma, um, etc. Uh, currently working with a company called Indigene Private Limited as a Salesforce consultant. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, team. Bupendra, do you want to go ahead? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, my name is Bupendra Singh, and I'm working with Horizontal from past one year, and I'm working in the marketing cloud area. Uh, I am certified uh, marketing cloud admin and email specialist. So good to see you all. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Pankaj? Sure. Hello, everyone. Pankaj Verma here. So I'm currently working with Accenture as a digital tech developer associate manager, and I'm leading a part of group over there and I'm a Pardot certified specialist. And also I have experience on SFMC, uh, but my core is now Pardot and you can ask any questions around Pardot or any issues which you feel, feel free to ask anything. So happy to serve. Awesome. Yeah, thank you guys for joining in. All right, team, uh, without any further delay, we'll quickly get into our agenda. So we just did the round of introductions now. Um, so we have few questions that we collected from some of our audience uh, over the past uh, couple of weeks, and then uh, we'll try answering some of those. Of course, we won't be able to get into all of those. Um, like if you still have any additional questions, you can bring up in the chat or in later in the in the session today. Um, and uh, on the tips, like knowledge sharing part, um, so the guest speakers today, Bupendra and Pankaj, both of them will be sharing, um, you know, their uh, small experience in, in, in terms of SFMC for email notification for post automation. And on the Pardot side, uh, on the lead generation using Pardot forms and form handlers. Okay. So do stick around like, you know, so you can get some in, uh, like, you know, uh, good tip, tips from them on, on some of these areas. Okay. So with that, uh, we'll quickly go into like, you know, a few questions that we got, uh, from our, um, you know, community. So one that we came across was the question was asked about DE manager and does it need any package installation? So um, DE manager, if, if those of you are not familiar, uh, it's part of the, the uh, collect code that you can use uh, as far as uh, for, for email collect or like as part of personalization. 
Um, so you can actually use that um, and it, it has a specific URL and, and code that you can actually uh, embed so that you can, uh, when you submit the form from an external site, automatically it will collect into a data extension. So you don't need any external package installation. It's kind of like similar to how we have the smart smart capture, but smart capture works in, in only in cloud pages. This is very useful if you have external um, uh, you know, uh, portals or external your own hosted pages where you want to like, you know, have a form where you can submit into data extensions. Uh, there is a help page and there's also some online videos and, and content blogs people have written on DMNGs. So please do check that out if uh, you need you know, more details on that. Uh, anybody has any other thoughts, guys, on the panel? Anything to add? Okay. Uh, the second question was around data encryption options in, in SFMZ. That's actually a loaded question. Um, there is actually uh, quite a number of options uh, that we look at. Um, so let me share what I have here as well. I'll put the links in the in the chat window so you guys can use that as well. So I've opened a few um, uh, links. These, these are only like you know, very few, but there are still more available if you Google as well. Uh, on, on, on a high level, there are two types of like, you know, encryption that we can use. One is at rest, uh, which is called transparent data encryption, which is done on a whole, um, like, you know, it is on the, on the database level. So it is not on the field level or inside marketing cloud. So you will not see encrypted data inside marketing cloud, but on the back end, the data as a whole is actually being encrypted. But the second one is actually field level encryption, which is like, you know, specifically on, on each field, like, you know, that you want to encrypt, you can actually go ahead and, and select that. But there are certain pros and cons towards that. So you need to like, you know, go through the documentation to figure out what happens if you use field level encryption, what happens when you are actually integrating and if there is shield available and all those things, right? So there's more overhead when you are using field level encryption, some features may not be supported. And once you turn it on, you cannot, you know, turn it off as well. Okay. So there are a couple of uh, good articles. One was by Jackson and then the other one from Pato from uh, Pato's team, actually from Devs United. And his one has like, you know, multiple parts. So the part three is where they have talked about the encryption part. So you can look at those documentation. A really good video that I would recommend is by Elliot and Ivan. Uh, they had a video recently that they did on secure development with Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So they've talked about some of the security aspects as well. Um, like, you know, some things, tips to look at. So even within AmScript, we have functions like, you know, encrypt uh, symmetric and decrypt symmetric. So you can, how to use that as well. Elite has talked about that. So it's pretty good. Uh, Ivan has some tips as well, like, you know, okay, what to use in terms of encryption keys and all that. So I would highly recommend uh, if you have been working on the platform for a while and you want to look at, you know, encryption options, please do check this out. Trailhead, definitely there will be a few modules as well, but then, yeah, so you can definitely check some of these out. Uh, Anurag, um, Sharat, Swami, anybody has any other thoughts if you guys want to add? No, Shubo, I think we are good. No, okay. Shubo. Awesome. Cool. Thank, thank you. The third question that, that was interesting one is like, you know, extracting custom profile and preference attributes as well. So um, I'm assuming this is more to do like from within the platform, an easy way to do it. I know from like, you know, from code using scripting, you can do it, but if you use SQL, um, the easiest way to do it is use a data view. There is a data view called enterprise attribute and you can specify the um, your uh, subscribe, your profile attributes and preference attributes. Now the documentation says um, on when you look at this particular data view, it says it can only retrieve profile attributes and not preference attributes. But when I tested, I was able to see that we can get the custom preference attributes the default one called HTML opt-in, I was not able to get it. Even though I, I put the space in, I was not able to get it. I tried different options. It wasn't coming. It kept giving me an error. Like, you know, so I'm assuming the, the default one doesn't come. But any custom one that I created, I was able to like, you know, query uh, the, any uh, preference attributes also, I was able to query. Okay. So that is one thing you can, you can definitely ask. Uh, I mean, you can try out. Okay. Anybody has any experience with um, extracting this one or any other thoughts to this? Yeah, Abhishek, I'll, I'll just share the links shortly. Uh, so as soon as I finish this one, yeah. Okay, and the other question was on, on Salesforce data extension, what is it used for? So, um, uh, so on a high level, like, you know, we have like, you know, our standard data extensions and then synchronized data extensions. So synchronized data extensions is like when you have connected it with uh, marketing cloud and if you are actually getting data in from you know sales service 
you're syncing in like you know the objects from there then it automatically comes into the synchronized data extension uh, as those objects fields whatever you are opting it'll come in salesforce these on the other hand is like you know if you're trying to do a salesforce send meaning when you try to send uh, make a send to any of the um, objects or like either a lead or contact or a campaign member in salesforce it should be to their specific id like you know the uid that they have it automatically creates a salesforce de or you can actually like you know, the moment you do a salesforce send it will create a, a salesforce data extension to store that right now the advantage of having a salesforce de is uh, the the tracking data like you know the any details about that particular send will be sent back to uh, the sales cloud instance or the service cloud instance in other cases it will not be sent like if you do a send to uh, a regular standard ex um, uh, data extension and you uh, like you know, if you try to do that uh, even if you have the contact id and all that from crm in that particular data extension it will not sync it back to salesforce okay only it always has to be a salesforce d only then will it sync it back so that is the the prime use of like you know having a salesforce d if you want to have the data sync back to marketing cloud sorry the crm side and uh, the last question that we took in was on the results of an automation. How do I see the automation results? And there was a sub question to this, if I can add a subscriber to an automation, but I didn't feel that was, maybe they got confused between a journey and automation. So um, uh, so the results of an automation, if you are in automation studio, like you know, once you run it, you can go to the activity tab and then you can you can view how it is, how did it perform? If it was, if it was a failure, or if it was success and you can see when it ran, how much time it took and all that. So that's probably where you will need to go and look at. Uh, you can even opt by getting in an email uh, setup, like, you know, uh, in the, when you, in the activity tab, if you go, you can actually set an email uh, for both when it completes or if it errors out. In both cases, it will send you emails, like if you set up your email. And uh, the you cannot add a subscriber like that. Like you know, this, this is not uh, like you know the, the context of adding a, a subscriber or contact to uh, to an automation is, is a journey, right? So they actually go through different steps, and in, in that's what journey builder is for. Automation is not the one-to-one -one engagement tool. Like you know, that is the journey builder part. So um, I hope whoever asked that question who got that clarified. Uh, and then on the career guidance side, like you know, there were a couple of questions. So. Uh, how to switch careers to SFMC. So, um, Anurag, Sharad, do you or some uh, do you guys want to take some of this? Like, you know, if you based on your experience, like, you know, how do you switch your career from digital marketing or like from non marketing side into SFMC? Uh, Anurag, you want to Okay, hold on, let me see. Is anybody on? Can we hear? Okay. I lost Antrag actually. Can you guys all hear me okay? Yes, sure, we can. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sharad, do you have any anything that you want to share from your journey? Or even Samya, Bupendra, Pankaj. So yes, I will share my journey. Like, uh, so just to uh, like share with you guys <clears throat> before switching to, you know, you know, I started my journey with exact target. Okay, then I switched to Marketo. I worked on really like three to four years on Marketo, and now I'm working on Parrot. So I will say, if someone is looking to switch to SFMC or any of the sales uh, cloud, you know, or sales for services. Okay, so the the only single way is, you know, to keep yourself on a learning path. Okay, so we have trailblazer to uh, and trailheads to make it make us aware of what is going in the market and how the uh, sales force is evolving with a different like SFMC or Pardot and all uh, tools and technologies. So I will say uh, it's pretty much easier to switch because we are having the learning paths open. And I also switched from Marketo to Pardot and uh, that to, uh, you know, four years of experience on you know, Marketo and then, uh, you know, Pardot is a new tool. So that helped me a lot. So for that thing, I will really say, okay, always follow Trailhead and Trailblazer community uh, that will really provide you a good glimpse. Awesome. Yep. Thank you for sharing, Pankaj. Anybody else wants to share? OK, 
okay um so what i would i would look at is like you know if you are coming in from a different background um like you know so if you have digital marketing background already the person who asked this question has said that they had digital marketing background already um it it's relatively more easier because once you have you know, some basics about marketing like you know then it's just about learning how the tool works right and then uh, see sfmc is meant to be a b2c tool meaning like you now you are trying to like look at actual consumer perspective and not business perspective so uh, it's about like understanding how do you reach out to different uh, you know your customers through different channels how do you personalize it so there are multiple modules tools within sfmc now, now the difficult part about sfmc is the even though there are a lot of there's a lot of content uh, you know in training materials everything online nowadays getting a free org is very difficult okay so um, there is no free org available like how we have for crm so either you have to be a part of the uh, a partner org or you have to be a customer who's already bought marketing cloud so that is the only uh, difficult part um, that that we we foresee and that's a lot of things that you know people have actually uh, said that they have difficulty on that okay so let me just bring anurag back in okay um and but if you are not coming in from a marketing background then uh, it's 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 like you know slightly uh, more like a you know, journey for people to understand like they have to understand the concept of marketing and how marketing tools are used especially from a marketing automation and depends on the role as well what role are you trying to get into okay so if i can go to some of the slides that we have here so there are different roles that you can actually go for and if you are in a beginner role you probably will get into like you know sometimes into content development um, like you know so that is probably like you know working with html emails css you know building content assets and all that like you know sometimes it would be like you know getting into a development role where you might be like you know responsible for uh, scripting uh, you might be able to like maybe even doing uh, customizing some of the content that is already there um, you would actually look at a bunch of programming areas like you know with apis integrations custom activities sql definitely so uh, some areas regarding like you know it's not only really always coding there is always like sometimes like you know you have to do some segmentation with data so data management is um, 95% of the time i would see like many of the people who especially in our region like you know people would end up like working with data like you know um, uh, working with uh, automations journeys uh, data segmentation figuring out like you know how to use um, that for like you no know, multiple campaigns and all that so that that definitely is there as you grow you get into more strategic roles of architects consultants and even campaign management and all that so there is depends on like you know how you are uh, where you are in your uh, like you know experience level and how how are you getting into a team and what kind of role is open for you but uh, on a basic level you still need to understand how marketing works so if you're coming in directly from a, a sales for crm background uh, and you're trying to shift into marketing um having that extra like you know going and understanding how marketing works and then understanding the platform would be easier uh, and it is uh, one thing to mainly note marketing cloud is very different from crm so it does not look and feel like the actual crm that you are used to if you are coming from salesforce side okay so it's a totally different platform um and to learn like you know you can go to different areas like you know the the career path the trailhead trailhead now there's a lot of new modules on trailhead right now um so i would highly recommend like you know going through seeing the career path and trailhead as well and then if you are part of a partner community uh, there is actually courses on partner learning camp and then there's a multiple blogs and youtube channels we have done a lot, lot of uh, boot camps as well so that will really help um so you can go look at you know some of the videos blogs content and all that you know many of our marketing champions have shared online as well okay so you can feel free to reach out to any of us like you know online we will be happy to help you guys on that okay uh even pardot as well so like you know if you're looking at from a pardot perspective uh, on the b2b side um, so pardot is the other tool uh, actually it's a typo here how should i start learning pardot sorry about that so uh, you would have similar content on that as well and there are quite a number of folks now especially on this call as well like anurag isha soumya all have like very good experience in pardot in tun pankaj as well so they are more than happy to like help you if you reach out to them in the community guys any any other points to add to the question that we had to on career guidance from for sfmc and pardot uh just want to add a uh, one point of here you know <clears throat> so and this is this is basically a usually caution uh, common caution uh, from the community folks who want to learn the sfmc of the pardot 
uh, the best thing which I would like to add over here that if you are a partner community, you know, uh, or a consulting partner with a sales force, go with the partner learning camp. Uh, it comprises of the detailed uh, knowledge about how you can start these two stacks, uh, along with, you know, joining with the uh, the community sessions uh which already being shared by the leaders like you know shibu is having his own channel where he started his own uh like providing a knowledge about the sfmc how you can start and the same uh learn from the trailer also so do not run fast you know go with the step by step uh and don't think that you know it's, the sfmc is the biggest challenge or a road back to you to learn the marketing your platform Thanks, Anurag. And uh, a, a slight uh, addition to that question. So there was another question regarding uh, on the career side as well. So if I am um, getting into SFMC, do they need to start learning HTML, CSS, and AMP script and all that? So my recommendation is like, you know, it depends on the role that you're getting into. Um, and if you're getting into a developer role, um, like and not too much of content, uh, it would depend like, you know, so if you're going to be looking at it con content development, you will definitely need to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then AMP script and SSJS, um, for sure. Most of the marketing cloud developers have to like, know, including APIs as well. So that is something they will end up working with at some point in time. SQL is something that you need to know as well, because data, uh, quite a lot of times, like, you know, we do a lot of segmentation. So I would say like, you know, uh, talk to the team that you are expecting to get into but if you are looking at like you know getting into marketing cloud for the first time and if it's a new role you have no idea like where you will get opportunities i would say yeah um, focus on like you know the the core capabilities of like marketing in terms of programming um, uh, html css is definitely good to know because you will end up like working with content amp script ssjs uh, apis if you know that will really give you an advantage uh, because like nowadays everybody looks for marketing cloud developers who have that knowledge so uh, more than good to like you know have that in your in your back pocket okay but don't forget sql like many times like you know people forget that you know that and it's not easy like you know it's not like you know i mean uh, i i know like because i train people i've actually talked to you know some team members and other folks as well uh we think it is very easy but when you get to certain use cases you really need to know like you know your, your joints like you know and there are certain uh specific uh keywords and all that you can use you cannot use DML statements like, you know, delete, insert, update, and all that, only select statements. And then what is the right way to do use, you know, SQL across multiple tables, data views, and all that. Uh, and and to ev quite a number of scenarios, there are different solutions that you can do in Marketing Cloud. So understanding what is the optimal one to choose and why would you choose it, and that's also very important. So always keep that in mind, like, you know, and learning by, like, you know, referring to, like, you know, you know uh, blogs, articles, stack exchange questions, that actually helps you because some of the senior people have already posted a lot of these content online already. Um, I would highly recommend like, you know, when you come across a scenario, figure out, okay, what go check online. You will see a lot of people who have already answered that and then try to build out like, you know, your answers to that and see like, okay, what will work in your scenario? And then what, what is, what do you think is the best option or not? Okay. Always try to validate that. Okay. Any other uh, inputs team like, you know, or anybody even in the, in the, chat like if you guys have any other thoughts opinions feedback we'd love to hear okay if nothing else and i'll pass it to our guest speakers for today um so first person that we have um, is uh, bupendra singh so he will actually be talking on email notification post automations in sfmc bupendra can you hear me okay are you all good to start Yes, I can. I can take the screen. Okay, Just please minute. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, is the presentation visible? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you so much again for joining in. Uh, today, we will be talking about uh, how we can get the email notification for paused automations. So let's get started. First, let's just understand the business challenge we could have faced if we are not getting that email. Uh, so as we know that automations plays a big role, you know, to confirm the correct audience flow in our marketing cloud business unit. And uh, consider you have many automations running in your business unit the, with all sorts of activities. 
And if someone edits the automation to make some changes and accidentally the person missed to reactivate the automation, this will definitely uh, lead to a series of incorrect uh, events. So depending on the type of automations you are using, uh, the automation was paused, uh, will, uh, will directly impact the target, or, uh, target data extension. And since now the automation is not running, the audience in the target data extension will get, uh, will not get changed. And this will impact the target audience for our emails as well. And we definitely do not want to send emails uh, to wrong audience. And this is strictly, uh, this may directly impact our ROI for the program. So how can we be saved from this, uh, you know, hassle? So it's all, uh, it's very easy if you get that notification for that uh, automation, which has been paused and uh, we can definitely go and reactivate the automation if that is still in use. So uh, now let's just understand the process, uh, how we are going to achieve that email notification for the, all the post automations. So the process is first, we'll retrieve the automation data using the APIs, and then we'll insert the data uh, that we have retrieved using APIs in a specific data extension. This both the steps, uh, first and second, will be performed in the in uh, in a single single script, and then we will be filtering the data depending on our uh, business use case, and then we can create a journey uh, from the filter data. Uh, filter data, we will be getting a, a data extension. We'll put the data in the data extension, and which we will be using as a uh, entry source for our journey, and we'll send the email for all the pause automations. So this is going to be the flow of our uh, process. Now let's deep dive in the demo session. Uh, let me share my screen. Is my marketing cloud business unit visible? Yes, we can. Okay. So the first case is uh, first thing first, we'll have to create the API package for this. So you just need to go in the setup part and under the install packages, you can create a new API package for this. I have already created one, but I'll just show you for uh, uh, the demo purpose. You can create the API package and you can add the component. For now, we, will, uh, we need the API integration for our case and we will be using server to server for, our, uh, for getting our client credentials authentication. Now we just need to give the, uh, you know, the, permissions and the scope that our API can perform in the uh, in marketing cloud. So what all actions you want to perform using our uh, using our API, you can control from here. Uh, so for our case, I think we'll, we'll definitely need the read write uh, edit access for automations, journeys and data extensions and emails. So do give us those permissions and save that. So once we have that ready, I have already created one data uh, API package which is API B. And I have stored the credentials in a data extension. Let me just show you that. So it's, it's, uh, uh, it's best case if we do not, you know, reveal the credentials uh, in the code directly. So it's, uh, it's the best way to store the cred uh, credentials in a data extension and then uh, use the lookup function in, the, uh, in your code to retrieve those data, uh, those credentials. So I have created a data extension that is API package details. And I have added all the client credentials, uh, client ID, client secret, account ID, tenant ID, and content type in our data extension. So these are nothing but uh, the uh, secret credentials that we have received from our API package only. Account ID is the tenant ID, uh, is the MID for our business unit. So this is the initial setup that we need to do before we dive into the coding. Uh, now let's just see the code, what we have written. My VS code is visible, right? No. Oh, just give me a minute. Uh, is it visible now? Yes. Okay. So the first thing first, we will have to uh, generate the access token uh, for our actions that we want to perform using the APIs. So, uh, as we know that we have already uh, like you know ins uh, inserted the data in api package details uh, all our client credentials client id client secret and account id now we will use the lookup function to get the data in and uh, we will store the data 
in the variables that is client ID, client secret, and these variables. Now we'll, uh, like, you know, in the post request, we will be using the uh, variables that is auth URL, content type, and payload. In our payload, we have used the same uh, client credentials uh, in, in, our, in our payload, and we have requested that in our post request. So once you pass on these variables and we have kept the content type as application JSON because the response of this uh, request will is going to be in JSON file and the response is returned in our function. And we have retrieved the function details, uh, retrieved the function uh, details in our variable. And we have the access token and auth URL or uh, rest URL already generated. So in the response, I think we will have, uh, we have the auth URL authentication token, REST URL, and the SOAP, uh, SOAP URL as well. So we just need the auth URL and REST URL for this uh, use case. We'll just retrieve those and we'll proceed further to get the details of our automation because uh, right now we will be needing all the details related to the automations uh, which are there in our marketing cloud instance. So we have created the function to uh, retrieve, we have created retrieve request and uh, taken the object type as automation. And here we, I can define like what all properties I want to retrieve of automation. Uh, I have used five, six properties that is program ID, uh, is active name, customer key status. Status is most important because this is the thing uh, which we'll use to define uh, like, you know, for what records we want to send the emails. And uh, these are the <clears throat> properties are the same. These are also the field names that we have created in the data extension where we will be storing this data. Now I have used a simple filter in which I have, uh, uh, in which I have like, you know, provided the status of the automation status, uh, marketing cloud, you know, uh, reads the status of automation in numeric form. We will in later stage, we will be converting these numeric forms in the, uh, verbal status that we use that is, uh, active and active and all those state, uh, all those words. But for now we will have to retrieve that in the numeric form only because marketing cloud reads the data in the same form. And we will use the invoke retrieve to, you know, retrieve <clears throat> to retrieve the array from the retrieve request that we have created already. One, uh, there is one case that we, uh, uh, one more thing that I have used here is to clear the data extension. If there is any data already present in our data extension, uh, in our target data extension, where we will be putting this data. So this script is only, you know, deleting the data. If there is any, uh, data already present in the data extension. Now we'll initiate the for loop and start reading the records one by one. So we have the name, customer ID, program ID, and all these things. We will retrieve one by one and pass it, pass all the details in our variables. We have the variables ready with the details. Now what we just need to do is, we just need to pass these variables <coughs> in our uh, update request, insert request, and we will have the uh, like you know data extension updated with all the data. In between, I have also written one more uh, thing that we talked about is the is to convert the numeric form of status in our uh, regular understanding status that is error building error. These status you can find on the help article also of Salesforce automations. So that is that's a help article provided by Salesforce. So you can uh, find these status there as well. So this is a basically a flow and uh, uh, the, basically the script which we have written to first get the access token. Second, we are retrieving the data of automations, and then we are inserting the data in our automation, uh, in, our, in our data extension, sorry for that. So we have uh, written the script and the same script we are using in our uh, automation studio as well. Is my BU instance visible? Yep, yep, we can see. Okay. So I have uh, written the same script uh, in our script activity, which is uh, which, which we just saw. And uh, in this in the same automation, I have used uh, one more thing that is this SQL query. So this query is nothing but we are just uh, you know filtering out the data that the automations which are paused two hours back. So just to keep a close eye on the automation flow, we can definitely change the number of hours. You may want to get the status uh, per day also. So if you want, you can convert it in 24 hours or maybe a day or something like that, depending on your business uh, use case. But still, I have kept it as two hours. So whatever data exchange, uh, whatever automations were modified in last two hours will be 
captured and put it in our, in our target data extension, which is paused automation data to us. So we have already created this data extension. <clears throat> this one. So the SQL output will be saved in this automation, uh, in, in this data extension. And uh, the script which we have written, uh, the output for that script will be stored in this data extension. That is uh, all automation data update. So now let's just see if the script is running. Just save it. Let's just inactive some of the automations if we can, so that we can have the correct data as well. I'll just go ahead and deactivate this. Just one more. So I have inactivated uh, some of the automations which are already present in my business unit. And let's see if those automations can be <clears throat> figured out and we can store that in our uh, data extension to send the emails. So I'll just run this automation. We'll see the outputs in the data extension. Okay. So the script, this automation has started running. The first activity is under progress. So this is how you see the output. I saw one question in our uh, in uh, in our audience as well that how we see the status of automations. So here you go. Uh, so when you run the automation in the activity section, you can uh, see the status of automations uh, uh, activities that this is still in progress and this will start once this activity completes. I think this will take a minute or two. So in the meantime, we can understand the journey that we have created uh, for to send our emails. <clears throat> so this is the journey that we have created. Uh, as we know that our audience, uh, like the data that we are uh, pulling out from our SQL is going to be the entry source for our journey. So the data is like, you know, placed in paused automation data extension, and we have used the same data extension for our uh, event and uh, journey entry source. And we have scheduled this journey for every two hours. So every two hours, whenever this automation runs, there will be an email sent out for the automations which are in pause state and other states. Then we have used a decision split uh, just to filter out the data uh, records, which is having the status only for paused, uh, inactive, or ready. So these three status will be considered uh, to send out the emails. If the record is not having the status from these three, it will be passed from other path. Okay, so let's see the status of our automation, if it is running. Yeah, so there you go. The first activity is completed. We have the second activity running. That is our SQL activity. We can see the output for the first one. Yes, so all automation data update, I think we have the 75 records. So this script activity has ret retrieved all the 75 uh, records from our business unit and it has placed in this data extension with the details that we requested. So we have the data. I think the script SQL should also complete it. Yeah, so SQL is also completed. We can see the output of SQL. And this, I think we have three, we paused two uh, of the automation and one status was changed because we ran it once. So yeah, so we have the data and now we can see that these two automations have the status of inactive trigger. So yes, we have the data ready to send out the email and we have the journey also ready. So now we can save and validate what, like, you know, before activating the journey, it's a good practice to validate uh, with a few records that what path those records are following. So this instance gives you a good, uh, like, you know, area to test your records. So it will give me some contacts to choose. We can choose up to 10 contacts to test. We have chosen the uh, all the three contacts from our data extension, and we'll start the test. So it will give me the path of each record which will be followed, uh, depending on the status, because we have the decision split 
uh, in between, which is going to differentiate the path. So it might take a few seconds. So while we wait, um, mm -hmm. Bupendra, I think there was a question from Kanika. So she was asking like, you know, the difference between the, uh, the standard notification and what we have right now. I mean, what you have built out right now. So, so I'm assuming yeah. like, you know, this one is basically it'll actually give you for post notifications yeah. as well. Right? Not late. Yeah. Right yeah. So standard notification, I think is only for uh, the automation status. It may be because uh, the automation is, you know, ran successfully or there was some error in the automation that is only for that. And if this automation is basically if we are, if someone accidentally paused the running automation and two days or three days back, you go and figure it out that this automation has not run from last two, three days. And this has, you know, impacted your targeted audience as well. So this is for that to save that hustle. Uh, you know, you can have that notification in email uh, after two hours if this automation has been paused. I hope that answers the question. Yep. Okay. So now uh, our validation is completed and uh, now we have the path of record. So first we can see that the status is running. So this will not be considered, this record will not be considered to send the email. Second, we can see the status is an active trigger. So this, uh, for this record, we will be getting an email notification. And for the third also, it is an active trigger. So we'll get the email notification for this. So this is how we can get the email notification for the paused, uh, paused or inactive triggers or the accidentally paused uh, emails. I'm sorry, not uh, automations that we have in our business unit. And you can definitely configure it for two hours, maybe three hours or uh, whatever the frequency you want to set up. So, yep, I think that was it uh, from my side. Any any further questions? Upendra, going back to your actual automation, uh, just mm -hmm. so that I understood the flow. Mm -hmm. um, so you first set the automation to run the script activity. Uh, and what does that actually retrieve? Oh, uh, so uh, come back again. I, I just missed the question. So, so what does that script activity retrieve? Like what does it do? This script activity. Yeah. So this is basically doing two tasks. First is retrieving the data for all the automations, which we have in our business unit okay. and then inserting the same data, which we have retrieved in, uh, uh, in a data extension that we have defined here. Got so it. all automation that was, that was the 75 records that you showed. Yes. Yes. Got that it. was got the 75 it. records okay. that we just got from the script activity. Okay. And then uh, what was the second SQL activity doing? So the SQL activity is doing nothing but, uh, you know, filtering out the data because there may be data uh, automations, which has been paused from ages. Uh, so what we need to do is we just um, like, there can be a use case where I just need the automation uh, records, which are paused in last two hours, three hours, mm -hmm. or maybe whatever the frequency is. So this is just, you know, uh, filtering out the data on that frequency basis that I want the data, which was uh, uh, data for uh, automations, which were paused in last two hours so that I can, you know, go and validate that was that missed or, you know, now is there definitely a need to be paused? Okay. So I can do that. So, so, so the SQL output would be like the list of data, so list yeah. of automations that have been paused and which yeah. you need to notify about, right? Yes. That's the okay. Thing. So in which case I was wondering, like, you know, if you can actually take this one step further and not use a journey, mm -hmm. um, use a verification activity right after that to see if the count is greater than zero mm -hmm. and then do a send email activity. So yeah, you don't have to use a journey as well. Like, you know, yeah. so there's another option to it as also as you can, but yeah, if, uh, if, you, if and, you want to like extend the uh, like you know, multiple parts and you want to do thing, yeah, journey, keep it on the journey. No issue. On yeah. That. And in this case, I think if you want to do with the automation, we'll have to add one more condition. That is the decision split that we are using in the journey builder is that, uh, we want to get the records only with the status that is, mm, okay. you know, the paused or uh, whatever decision splits that we have used in. Understood. Understood. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it gives so you more flexibility. Can... Yeah. That, yeah that I understand. It does. Yeah, it yeah, does. That... Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. So I think there was a couple more questions in the chat. Uh, if you can mm -hmm. just check. Um, so there was one question from Akash asking, what do we, why do we need the install package in the code? So that install package that we have created right now is, uh, to 
interact with the APIs uh, in, with the marketing cloud uh, using the APIs. So we have created that and uh, with the help of that, we have generated the access token uh, which we can use to perform different actions in our marketing cloud, maybe insert data or, you know, whatever the use case you want to perform. So there will be, there, there is a one help document also provided by Salesforce, uh, which states what all actions and what all things you can perform uh, in your marketing cloud business unit uh, using the APIs. Got it, got it. Yeah, but uh, you might want to explore WS proxy directly um yeah you know, that can be a using, case yeah 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 that is yeah uh like without using that soap api right now i know you've used both soap api that's why you're using yeah. that uh, yeah but then yeah. yeah if if i don't know if everybody is familiar with ws proxy also so so later on maybe like no, you can do part two and then try to see if you want to add in learn on ws proxy areas as well so that way you can yeah. avoid um, you know the api part of it yeah the install packages if you want to eliminate uh you can go with the ws proxy as well cool cool yeah i think yeah I, akash also confirmed the same yeah yeah uh, and then, yeah, Kanika's question was similar to what I have asked as well. So, okay. so Kanika, I hope hope that answered. Like, you know, the, if there is more flexibility that you need in terms of using the output from from that SQL, we can use Journey. Otherwise, we can use the verification and and automation yeah. studio itself to send out the email. So, that, like I said earlier, there are multiple options and ways that you can do it in marketing. Like, you know, it's very flexible. Uh, end of the day, it's it's up to you, like you know, based on what your use case is and how you want to, like you know, use it for your scenario. So you can use it cool. very simplistically, or if you want to, like, you know, extend it at some point in time, you can always think of multiple options. Yeah. Yeah. Even uh, just to give you one more use case, uh, in the same, if you want to do, like, you know, if you have uh, multiple audience which we want to send the email out, like there are ten stakeholders uh, for the automations, and I want to send the email out for all the ten stakeholders what we can do is we can create a data extension and uh, you know uh, in that data extension we can store only the email address uh, for the stakeholders and then we can use the uh, lookup function in the m script and email itself and then we can you know send the records from this particular data extension and then we can use it in the uh, to send those the to the audience as well so if you want to explore more cases definitely there can be more use cases in the same Sounds good. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bupendra. So this is very insightful, especially for people who are new to this. So I'm hoping you know, they will get some some ideas on how to if they want to implement it for their areas as well. So team, please go ahead Thanks. and if you still have any additional questions for Bupendra, you can add that in chat. I'm sure he will be happy to look at it. Yep. Uh, thank you, team. I'll, Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. I'll now pass it to let me just bring up my slide for a second. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Uh, okay, so the next one we have is a Pankaj session on Pardot. So lead generation using Pardot forms and form handlers. So um, Pankaj, do you wanna go ahead? Yeah, sure. I'm just sharing my screen and let me know if everyone is able to see my screen. So is it visible? Yes, we can, thank you. So lead gen, okay, it's like lead gen is really, uh, you know, the core and, uh, you know, the, the core competencies, okay, which we require for many marketing automation tool. And lead gen is really critical and important uh, for our business to business response, uh, automation. So even for B2C as well. So because if you don't have leads, uh, who will you nurture and uh, how you will process with the sales. So part of provides two major, you know, transformations uh, to generate a lead. One is the Pardot forms and another is the Pardot form handlers. Okay, so Pardot forms, okay, they are very simple to create. They are having progressive profiling. They are having, you know, uh, you can have uh, different advanced features with it. I will showcase that in a little while. And apart from that, Pardot forms also, you know, are compatible with AEM platform, can be used in different CMS and you can create them as a standalone. You can uh, create them as a, uh, landing page and you can use it in a various ways and then we have the second one which is part of form handlers so this is you know uh, something which i will say most of the uh, existing uh, b2b marketings they they love it uh, because you can use a single code uh, which is been generated by a form handlers on in your existing websites and you can have all the you know activities leads flowing from that particular website to your uh, part out so 
it's say it, it's called as web to lead form and uh, this is a simple code uh, which we need to embed uh, you know within the website so you have to work with your website guys your cms guys or your am guys or whoever is maintaining your uh, websites so they can just put this code within their uh, form which is existing on the website and you know data will be start pulling so I'll, both of them has some pros and cons so i will uh, you know cover them up in my later uh, later uh, sessions and like okay so this is the look and feel okay that this is the part of form and uh, this is how it looks like we having different fields then uh, we are having you know uh, different formats and then the, this is the major difference okay the part of form plus website so that means we have embedded our existing forms uh, like part of form using an embed code or iframe uh, within the website and the second one is the form handler where we are having our existing form on our website and then we are using <clears throat> you know url of form handlers to be uh, you know catered on the part of so uh, this thing is uh, like really important to understand uh, why it is important uh, to have those so let me just share my screen and uh, also uh, show you uh, to a demo slides like just taking to my demo account that what are part of forms i hope everyone is now uh, seeing my part of lightning page right yes yes yeah so uh, I'll create a demo form for you guys. Okay, so we can see uh, that we are having films. We can have submits, and so it's it's a, it's you know kind of a completion actions and all. So I will just show you that how a part of form really you know you know simplifies our life with the delete generations. Okay, so once we are creating our form, so this is a name and all which you which you win put at your own uh, you know as per your business and as per your folders and everything and then it comes to the you know fields so here you can add a number of fields which you want you can always always have you know your prospect fields your default fields the custom fields which you have created and you can also have formats and everything and i'm just just showcasing you with the email field okay so first of all we have set up this email field okay and we can also have you know fair format okay so these are the different formats like email with valid mail server email not from isps so this is helping uh, to authenticate okay who is filling our form so if i select with valid mail server so it will only take from the valid mail, mail server like you know uh, gmail or you know your uh, company profile and everything but uh, it won't take as uh, like test.com or something like that example.com or something like that it won't take and if i select email not from free isps or the you know free email service providers so it won't take any of the email addresses like gmail hotmail yahoo mail or uh, <clears throat> you know any free services so it won't take so it will ask them to insert the business accounts only so this is crucial when you are doing b2b and you want to you know generate the leads and then also uh, we're having different uh, options okay like uh, just showing you we have advanced options we can always display them we can always have a like display them in a completely field do not prefill and maintain the initial values and then progressive we can make them as a progressive profiling so on based on some of the you know fields which have been filled this will be shown we can also create dependent field so dependent field can be used in case of gdpr where you want okay someone who is uh, you know selecting uh, countries as Germany, Denmark, or uh, some other countries uh, which are European Union and which has GDPR laws. So fields like you know confirmed opt-in and double opt-in can be shown to them. So uh, this is like you know a major advantage. And then if I go to the next step, which is look and feel. So here we are uh, like we can select the templates. We can also have like submit button. We can have something which we need to put above the form, below the form styles the color coding and everything we can see uh and then we have advanced so this is one thing which i really okay want to emphasize on that uh these are some of the features which you know part out a stone and many of the marketing automation tools existing in the market really you know struggle a lot to go uh, to get these features uh within themselves so one is a kiosk mode okay so kiosk mode is like okay we will not cookie the browser so this will help when you are 
going to take you know adamant or you are uh, doing any kind of live meetings or you know physical events where like in person events you want them to fill out the forms and all to capture the data so you can always create uh, select this one and then you have not you so to the set and then you have the recapture so that you can have broad protection and then uh, <clears throat> the next step is you know thank you okay the thank you content uh, which is really important okay once they have filled out the form what is the next step okay they will getting this message and apart from this we have one thank you code here we can use the javascript and any like uh, scripting language so that uh, based on the you know um, for example if you want uh, them to have uh, some of the you know um, what i will say documents downloaded your <clears throat> case study or your or, you know other things uh, like valuable assets so you can use the thank you code you can use the javascript over here and that will automatically be downloaded once to submit the uh, form and also apart from this we have different completion actions where we can tag them we can add them to a list we can adjust the scoring we can send auto responder we can change the perspective values and once we have okay saved and confirmed this so based on my layout which i've used so let me just showcase how it looks so this is my layout which i have created okay and can you see like it is a very simplified form let's stand like i can use this as a standalone form okay i won't be needing any websites to it because it is uh, having that you know all the features which could be on the website and then i can uh, like use my name my last name company email and also for my broad protection it also asked me okay to check this up as a recapture so this was the one uh, we call as forms and then we have the second one which is a form handler okay so form handler is like you know a most simplified thing okay here uh, i've created one form handler so i will showcase that okay that we have created this uh, one as a form handler and we can simply go over here we can just we have to just pass on this particular code to our <coughs> sorry to uh, to the cms guys or am guys or existing like who are maintaining our existing websites to be used on that and the data will flow automatically to it so these are two simple you know uh, phenomena of generating a leads within parot and they are really helpful for our sessions uh, and also like for any of the activities you want to do and uh, so now i will talking about the you know pros and cons okay if i talk about pros and cons okay so the major pros of uh, using the forms is like you can use progressive profiling you can have the you know embed code which is here type frame you can use this uh, on your aem web page or on the existing any cms web website okay where you want the part of form to be showcased so uh, this is a pros that okay uh, you can use this forms it's, it is not like cloud pages which can't be used anywhere so you can use this over uh, to your am pages and apart from that is it supports the am uh, like you say uh, you've seen that it supports like both protection and it is having numerous other advantages and we can always control the look and feel we can control the layouts and we can create you know standalone forms like this and the the major you know i will say the back side is that okay you are very much dependent on uh, you know a good designing uh, you know some person who knows css and uh, html and javascript to create the codings and also to create this kind of page and then i if i talk about the uh, part of form handlers so here we are having you know major you know disadvantage is that it doesn't support any progressive profiling it doesn't support any port protection so it will just take the data from our existing website okay just use it and with our existing website but whichever will be the you know fields and all those value will be uh, you know pulling in to your part of account and you can use that only you can't control anything from here so these are the major you know advantage and disadvantages of both uh, the platforms 
and yeah so any any questions on this that uh, <clears throat> why and when to use uh, forms and form handlers i guess i've really uh, you know showcased you that that when and where we can use any more questions Great. Thank you, Pankaj. Uh, I'm just checking in chat. I don't see any questions as of now. Uh, then, yeah, I think, are you done? Is there anything else? Uh, no, I, I've done with this uh, and it was a short uh, presentation, but yeah, uh, like if some anyone has any more doubts, uh, like working with thank you code or any other things which is not working for them, feel free to reach out to me uh, because uh, this is like, this seems pretty much easy and you know, it could be as complex when you are uh, working on these forms and form handlers because we get uh, different requests and also uh, we need to make sure that uh, all the data which is captured are appropriate and as per the business requirements. Cool. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Pankaj. Uh, go ahead and share. Sure. I'm just stop sharing my screen. Yep. I hope you guys can see my screen. Yep. Okay. So I think that's all we had for today. Um, so I'll open it out for Q&A. Um, so team, if you have any additional questions, anything in what we covered today and anything additional or that we did not cover today, if you have any questions on either SFMC or Pardot that we can help with, we have some experts in the team here right now. So whatever we can answer, we'll try to answer. If not, we'll definitely get back to you as well. Any questions, last questions before we wrap up for today? Okay. Uh, let me unmute folks as well. If you guys want to unmute and ask, please do feel free to do so as well. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, Shibu. This is Prasad here. Yes, so just want to ask, uh, do we have any bulk upload options? Like in case if I have to create a set of automations, it could be. Uh, not sure if it is quite realistic, but uh, if we need to create a, a, a few numbers of uh, automations, uh, similar automations, only with few differences, right? I mean, do we have sort of a bulk upload options where I can uh, uh, load all the attribute, uh, all the inputs in an Excel sheet or uh, some uh, format, and then I can upload uh, into SFMC, and then I create the automations or any components for that matter. Yeah, not not from an uh, Excel standpoint, no. But uh, I know, like, you no, know, you are comparing it to like how we do data loader thing, right? But uh, one way to look at it is like if you are using the APIs um, or like, you no, know, using WS proxy, you can actually like, you no, know, have. The, if you have the data stored somewhere like you can you can use or using json and something like that you can you can do that programmatically is what i have seen like in this particular use case where we can reuse um like you know, either through the apis or ws proxy so in ssjs you can you can definitely do that so you can actually even if you want to uh, store that like somewhere uh, like you know, in, in data extension and then use that data to like you know build out your json that is also possible so both ways you can do it Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Most of the platform objects, like the old objects, like, you know, you see some like automations, email triggers and all those things are more accessible through the SOAP API areas or WS proxy. So WS proxy is a wrapper around SOAP API. So some of those old objects, like, you know, you will be able to access uh, and have more control if you use, you know, these two. Uh, the newer tools, like, you know, journeys, everything, that's where you see the REST API coming in, right? But in REST API as well, like, you know, there's not too much of like, you know, that is actually documented uh, in terms of like, you know, where you can do a lot of bulk things like that. So wherever they have uh, kept open endpoints, they have specified like, you know, if it's a bulk or if it's like, you know, and most bulk probably is more of like retrieving. I don't think for updates, they allow too much. There are, I've seen a few places where you can update asynchronously data extensions. There are a couple of REST API endpoints we look at the reference. So. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Shibu. Sure, thank you. Kanika, you raised a hand. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for having a great session. 
I have a question. Like uh, some days back, I was working on a requirement of a custom reporting where I was storing a data into data extension, but the request was to send that uh, data. So means send that reporting on an email. So is there any possibility to extract the data from a data extension and uh, load it into an email and send it to an higher management? Uh, so basically, you're you're saying like you know, load that into an email like so how much data are we talking about uh, maybe the uh, 100 records or maybe 50 records uh, again it depends upon the custom reporting so sometimes it's usually comes 50 of records and sometimes it's usually comes in hundreds of records so okay no one 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 way what i was looking at is like no if it, it's not something that you can get in your regular catalog right you are saying you want to build out your custom table report that you want like no? so yes yes yeah so one way to look at this like if you want to use amp script or scripting like you no know, inside an email build it out which is why i was asking like how big is it and you i'm expecting is just one email sent uh, no, multiple emails will be sent. So there's a higher management where that includes the panel of around five team members where huh. we were sending it to the managers and the sub managers. The report. Got it, got it. So it's still to a one distro or to like no two, three people. That's not too yeah. many people, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, because like every time one email gets sent, like, you know, the entire AMP script will get evaluated, which is why I was trying to see from a performance standpoint. So if you use a distro, uh, it will be like one send and then they on the on the client side they will have like they will go to each of the inboxes so so that is one way you can look at it which way in which case it will get rendered just once right that is one thing i was trying to see like you know how to not to use like you know too much at email send time like you no know, but because if you are going to generate the entire table and if it is not too many records it's okay it will be pretty fast like you know, if it is like you know the thousands of records and like or millions of records then it will become a problem that's why i was asking you how much data it is Okay, so if, if take an example of like we have a hundreds of records, so this uh, lookup function will be feasible. Yeah, yeah. So using AMP script, this is like a if more of an internal function that you're trying to figure out, right? Yeah. Um, so so the, the requirement of the custom report was to like uh, uh, to evaluate uh, uh, which journey is performing better. So on the basis of the campaign source, we were evaluating which campaign source was working really well for the journeys. Hmm. So around we, so journey wise we were uh, evaluating so there were around ten or uh, twenty entry sources for the customer so campaign sources were there where we were entering all the data into the journey and by journey by journey we were evaluating this campaign source is working well for this particular journey and this campaign source is working great for the another journey. Yeah. So that that what you can do is like you know you can have one automation like you know updating a data extension or like you know with the with those data like how journeys are performing, like, you know, on a periodic basis. And then you can have another automation where it actually has the email already configured to pull the AMP script data into it and do a send email, right? So every week, if you run that, like, you know, it will go and automatically take the data from the data extension where all this journey performance has been recorded. Uh, it will create the email and then you can send it out to the, to the management folks. So every week they will get the report. If that is something that you are looking at. Yes, yes. Thank yeah, I mean, you. that is like a small use case, right? but if you're using it like, you know, for large number of sends and large number of data, I wouldn't recommend that. That is, uh, it'll be a very big overhead uh, in, in my opinion. So, I mean, I'll, I'll ask the other team who members also who have experienced if they, they have any other option. So. so, yeah, I was evaluating the option of an using an FTP so we, we can extract the data and send it to an FTP. But again, the issue over there was that the senior management team is usually not being too much into technical side and they will be able to access the FTP. So we were left with an option to send a data on an email or maybe some other uh, way so that they can leverage it without having some technical. Yeah, that is, yeah, that is too much of an overhead. Like, you know, so uh, they will not go to FTP. Yeah, then their problem is like you're opening it out from a security risk standpoint where they will have access to FTP. You have to share credentials. You have to then you know, get things like, or you have to do an external uh, system like FTP where you have to go and pick it up and then do additional things on that. So if the data is small and the number of emails and is pretty small, then yeah, you can use the internal process itself. Like use Sam script, have a content block where actually it pulls in the data automatically and then put it in so that anytime you you need to like, you know, it will automatically pull whatever data is there in the, in the data extension, format it properly, and then you it will get sent out. So it won't be a problem. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shubhi. Sure. Sure. Any other questions, team? Okay. 
all right if there's nothing else i'll give you guys all your evening back i hope you have a great rest of the weekend special thanks to uh, bupendra and pankaj for joining us today um, like you know in enlightening us with you know these two special sessions i'm hoping like you know uh, like you know that people will reach out to you uh, for additional questions and get in touch with you like you know as, as part of the community so hope this was a good experience for all of uh, you guys as well so and last but not the least definitely our panel um, like you know for helping us with these sessions and the audience like you know for taking time out today to like ask questions and listen in patiently okay thank you all and have a wonderful weekend thank you thanks everyone thanks everyone for joining in